Word Studies with Dr. Ray Winston, a powerful and in-depth study of the Word of God. Dr. Ray? Psalm 119, 105 says, That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, welcome to Word Studies. I am Dr. Ray, and I want to thank God for the opportunity to study with you the ever-living Word of God. Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the Word of God is quick, and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing the sunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Welcome again to Word Studies. On this program, we study in depth the words of God. Recently, we have been studying on the pneumaticon. Pneumaticon, of course, is a Greek word for spiritual things, spiritual matters, things of the Spirit in particular, however. We're going to be in the book of Colossians. So if you've got a, 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 a Bible, you can turn to the book of Colossians, chapter 2, as a matter of fact, verse 1 is where we're going to, uh, where we're going to start at. And, uh, of course, Colossia. If you remember, if you had seen other of these uh, uh, episodes, if, for lack of a better word, on the book of Colossia, Colossians, uh, Colossia, of course, is a city. There was a city. The churches in those days were named after the cities in which they existed. You know, like if you live in uh, Inglewood, then your church may be named Inglewood. Or if you live in New, uh, uh, New Brunswick, yeah, your church may be named New Brunswick. But now, uh, this was Colossia, and of course the church was named Col- And when they wrote, when the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Colossians, of course he just simply used the, 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 the name that rhymed, as it were, with the city. Colossia, Colossians are the people of that city. Uh, of the, or, or the Colossians are the church of Colossia. Yeah? So, it all rhymes together with Colossians and church. So, we know that. Now, Colossians was also near another city called Laodicea. Does anybody remember the, 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 uh, the city Laodicea? It's in the book of Revelations. If you want to think it's around the last, it may be the last uh, of the churches. Yeah, that uh, the Apostle John, you remember, the Apostle John in the book of Re- Revelations had to write to those different churches, Thyatira and so forth like that, though, those various churches. And Laodicea was one of those churches. That particular church, Laodicea, was located in the same general uh, uh, area uh, of Asia Minor, near, it was near Colossia, like 10 miles or so from from Colossia. So they had something in, in common. One thing I need to say about the Colossia, though, is that Colossia, uh, Col- or, or the church in Colossia, was not started by the Apostle Paul. One of the few that were not started by the Apostle Paul. That one was started by someone else. I think his name was Fike, if I'm not uh, uh, grossly mistaken. Yeah, where this church in Colossia was started. And the Apostle Paul was simply writing to that church and uh, uh, trying to make contact, for, for lack of a better word, because they were believers. They were all believers, and they were the, the, the Colossians were attempting, as it were, they were, they were actually doing it, uh, keeping the Word of God. And, and of course, the uh, the Apostle Paul had heard about them, so he, he was writing them a letter, uh, co- in essence, congratulating them, if you will, on their faithfulness to the Word of God. Now, in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 1, notice what it says, For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. You know, they were, they, these churches were kind of partner-like churches. You know, some churches, are, they, they kind of work together, more or less. I know when I was raised up in the Baptist church, there were other Baptist churches that we always uh, uh, fellowshipped with, if you will. You know? There was a church called St. Paul, St. John, Baptist Temple, many of them. And, and those churches, we kind of, you know, we'd have meetings there and they'd have meetings at our church and so forth like that because we were all of the same denomination uh, and so forth. Now, uh, Laodicea and Colossia were kind of neighbor churches, you know, where you could, uh, where they were both actually involved in some of the same things. Notice, 
Verse 1, for I want you to know, this is Colossians chapter 2, verse 1, for I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face. No, the apostle Paul had not been to Colossia. He didn't know, he didn't personally, if you will, know the church in Colossia. Notice, as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Notice, that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love. Now, do you realize that we can be knit together in love? We're talking about agape, if you will. Agapio is, is the very form of agape, which is the nine form, noun form for love. Yeah? It, it, agape is basically, it has been called a God kind of love, if you will. Yeah? Because God loved us without condition, as, as it were. Yeah? You might say, well, there is a condition, Dr. Ray. Well, the only condition is for salvation, not the condition for being loved. Yeah? You you know, many times you say, I, I don't love the, the, this person or that person because of thus and so. <laughs> yeah. Well, God has that prerogative also. He can love some and he cannot love others. He loved, as it were, uh, Jacob. And the Bible says it, 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 that he hated Esau. Remember Esau and Jacob? They were twins. Yeah. And, and God loved Jacob, but the, uh, uh, the essence of it was that he hated uh, J uh, Esau. Because that's the opposite of love, if you will. Yeah. It would be hate, wouldn't it? Notice. Notice verse 2 that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the fullness of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the what mystery of God both of the father and of Christ now <clears throat> Mysterion, that's a Greek word for mystery. Now, the mystery, in essence, would be Christ, as far as we're concerned, because many people, even today, many, uh, quote-unquote, denominations, yeah, or religions, if you will, uh, or, or those who claim to be uh, believers, yeah, they don't believe in Jesus, yeah, Jesus Christ. His name, of course, in Hebrew is Yeshua, Hamashiach, or Jesus the Christ. He has no last name. You know, many times you'll get that mixed up because if you're not biblically knowledgeable, you hear the word Jesus Christ. It's like John Doe. Yeah. And John is his first name and Doe is his second name. And many times people will say Jesus is his first name and Christ is his second name. That is not so. Yeah. Christ means the anointed one or the Mashiach or Messiah. Yeah. Now, many uh, Jewish Jews, for lack of a better way of saying it, yeah, are still waiting for the first coming of the Messiah or the Mashiach in Hebrew. Yeah. They're looking for the first coming. Well, you know what? As the song goes, I've got news for you. He's already come, yeah, the first time, and he's coming again, okay? The reason why many Jews, of course, I have to kind of empathize thighs with them because they had been taught in the law of Moses, and uh, in many cases, they didn't understand the law of Moses as they perhaps should have. Now, somebody would say to me, well, Peter understood it. Yeah, Matthew understood it. Yeah, James understood it. Yeah, John understood it. So, what's up? Andrew understood it. All the apostles, they were Jews. Yeah, and they got it. Oh, what's wrong with the other people? Yeah, what, what's, their, what's their issue? Well, it, it could be that it had not been uh, revealed to them in a way that they, that they would get it. You know, many times people will read the Bible and they say, I don't understand that. I don't get that. You know, I don't know what they're talking about here. Uh, but yeah. Because remember, Jesus asked the question himself. Who do men say that I am? Yeah. And they said, they gave him all kinds of names. The, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the apostle, uh, <clears throat> John Baptist, whatever. Yeah. They gave many uh, uh, or, or answers to that question. Who do men say that I am? But Jesus rephrased the question. He said, well, okay. They don't seem to have the right answer. So who do you, talking about the apostles, who do you say that I am? Yeah. 
Peter was, how would you say Peter? Peter was a, a very outspoken, he, he grasped things really fast, yeah, through the power of the Holy Spirit, of course, not on his own. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter grasped things. You know, sometimes people say, well, I don't get it, I don't get it. You know, there are many people that preach and preach and, and, and lay it out so beautifully, yeah, and some people still don't get it, you know. And uh, but, but Peter got it. Peter got it really fast when, Je when Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? What did Peter say? Yeah? You are, yeah, you are the Mashiach, yeah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, that's what Peter said. Now, what did Jesus say after Peter said that? Peter, Jesus said, you're correct. Yeah, he told Peter that what he had uh, uh, or, or, or said, for lack of a better way of expressing it, what he had said was correct. Yeah. Then he told Peter that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, by God Almighty himself, revealed it to Peter, who Jesus was. Now, it's being revealed to us, too, yeah, through the Word of God. We've got more evidence. Remember that there's a church that has a song called Evidence. They start out with evidence, evidence. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, Crenshaw Christian Center. And then they start with evidence, evidence. They sing that song, evidence. Well, we have more evidence than Peter had, yeah, because Peter had been with Jesus for a while, but it hadn't been the full three and a half years that he was with him, yeah, that it had been revealed to Peter. But Peter knew even then, yeah, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's who he is, yes. He's still the Christ, the Son of the living God, the anointed one, the Mashiach in Hebrew, the Messiah, yeah, our Savior, our Redeemer, yeah, that's who he is, yeah. Peter knew it even then. Now, somebody might say, somebody, someone, let me slow down, someone might say, well, it didn't seem to do any good because Peter denied him, yeah. Well, many times, what? We mess up. We make mistakes. We do the wrong thing. We sin. Yeah, well, you can get right, break it all down to sin is what Peter did. Yeah, but Peter had a reason for it. It wasn't that Peter just said, I don't know him. You know, I don't know who that is. Peter believed that if they were going to crucify Jesus, they were going to also crucify him, which they ultimately did. Yeah, many times it's not a good idea to think things bad that are going to happen to you. Because maybe it's going to happen, but it did happen to Peter. Ultimately, Peter was crucified. Yeah, same as Jesus, but not at that time. Peter lived some, who knows, 50, 60, 75 years, 80, I don't know how many years Peter lived, but it was a long time after Jesus had been crucified, some 2,000 years ago. Okay, now, <clears throat> I said all of that. To say this, look at look back into your your Bible, Colossians, Colossians chapter two. Notice, notice what it says. Now it says something that uh, of the riches of the full assurance of understanding. This is verse two, middle uh, assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. And of Christ. Now, notice what it says about our knowledge in Him. It, it says both knowledge of the, of the mystery. And that's what I was talking about. Mystery, right? Mysterious. You may think about mysterious things, like mysterion in the Greek language. We're talking about mysterious things are things that people don't get it. They don't understand. Yeah, it, it, it's a secret. It, it, it God, isn't God a secret? No, He's not a secret. He may be mysterious to you. Why would he be mysterious to you? Yeah. He's not mysterious to me. Yeah, I, I understand him. I know who he is. Yeah, he's my Savior. He's my Lord. He's my Deliverer. He's my Redeemer. He's my Healer. Yeah, I could go right down the line of, of, of who he is to me. I know who he is. Yeah, and one day I will stand in front of Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Christ. Now, I know that there's a song about, well, I don't know what I'm going to do when I see the Lord face to face. Yes, I don't know whether I'm going to fall on my knees, fall on my knees uh, uh, and pray or cry or whatever. I, I don't know. Neither do you. Yeah, when you're saying face to face. Yeah. Okay. Somebody said, well, didn't the Bible say that no man can see God and live? Yeah. Yeah, it does say that. But now Jesus has been revealed in this earth realm 
as the Son of God in the flesh, as it were. God in the flesh. As a matter of fact, Jesus, when he was here on the earth, when I am uh, Yeshua, Jesus, he was fully man and fully God at the same time. That's why the disciples and all of those in Israel who were there alive at the same time could look Jesus in the face, yes? And uh, then uh, uh, there was a, a certain denomination that would say to you, well, okay, that then that proves that Jesus and God are not the same. That is not true. Jesus and God are the same, yeah, from a divinity point of view, yeah, because God, you know, you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the, uh, God the Holy Spirit. We are not talking about two, three separate entities. We're talking about Eckhart in the Hebrew Bible. They recognize, even the Jews recognize that God has been revealed, yeah, or will, and to some of them will be revealed in three separate entities, if you will. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. Uno. Yeah. In the in the in the Spanish Uno. One. Yeah. There's only one God. It's the way he has revealed himself that confuses some people. And it should not confuse you because the Bible says, is there anything? On the line the word anything. Is there anything too difficult for God? Whether you understand it or not is not the issue. Yeah? No, somebody say, well, if I don't understand it, I can't believe it. Well, many people don't believe in the immaculate conception, if you will. That's a big word, immaculate conception, right? That's talking about Jesus Christ being born of a virgin. The virgin, if you will, Miriam or Mary in the English. Yes? But he was. It's true. And you would say to yourself, well, I don't get it. How could that be? Yeah, neither did Mary. Mary didn't get it. She said, uh, remember when the angel told Mary, you'll have a child. Yeah, born of the Holy Spirit. She's gonna, at first she said, you're going to have a child. And she said, how can that be? Since I have not, I have not been with a man. How can I have a child? Yeah. She and Joseph were, were betrothed, but they hadn't come together. So she was saying, how can that be? You know, since I have not been with a man. Yeah. And, and of course, the angel explained it. That child would be of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you understand how the Holy Spirit was able to produce uh, a child through the Virgin Mary? Do you understand how that could happen? No. Even doctors don't get it, yeah? Our learned, yeah, PhD, uh, double PhD, doctors don't get it. They don't know how that could happen, yeah? Now, that's why I said, with God, all things are possible. Another example, if you will, I won't be on this that long. Another example, with, if you will, is, <clears throat> or, should I say is, or, uh, uh, anyway, Abraham and Sarah. Remember? Abraham was 100 years old, his wife 90 years old, and they had a child. That, in, even in those days, was impossible. Yeah? Isaac should not be. Yeah, okay. That was the child. His name was Isaac. He should not be. <laughs> yeah. That's why God told Abraham to go out and kill Isaac, if you will. Because I know a lot of people say, well, God didn't really mean to kill him. You know, that's murder, isn't it, Dr. Ray? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, yeah. God said he, he was a sacrifice. Okay. When he told Abraham, go out and kill yourself. As a matter of fact, Abraham didn't hesitate. Why didn't he hesitate? Why didn't he say, well, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to kill my only, now, and that was not his only son. He had another one, yeah? He, yeah. His name was Ishmael. He had another son named Ishmael, yeah? And therefore, uh, he's thinking, but the reason why that Abraham did not hesitate is because in the land, I, I, I think it's not, or something like that, where Abraham was raised up, he had been exposed, yeah, to child sacrifice, says. And they did it, you know, those were uh, non-believers, uh, or, 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 or I'm, I'm trying to think of that bad word you call, <laughs> that you call non-believers, yeah, who were practicing, pagans I suppose would be good enough, who were practicing uh, 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 child sacrifices. 
They were practicing sacrifices to their gods, if you will. On the line of the word gods, plural, God, they had more than one God. And they thought in order to appease the gods and make the gods happy, yeah, so that nothing bad would happen to them, they had to sacrifice certain ch- uh, children in that culture. Prayer, Abraham, the name was Abram at the time, came out of. So, The sacrifice of a child was not something that Abraham was not uh, unaware of, for for the the best way that I can put it. Yeah, I know what he was. And then when God told him to sacrifice Isaac, he didn't hesitate. He, it's not like he said, he, it, the Bible doesn't say he pondered, yeah? You know, to ponder is to take, well, wait a minute, let me think about this. Is this, is this God? Because if God tells you, you know, if God tells you, sacrifice your only got son, you only got one son and God tells you to sacrifice, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to grab your King James, your King, uh, your new King James, your, your all these different uh, versions of the Bible, and you're going to try to figure out a way out of this, aren't you? Yeah, sure you would. Abraham didn't, Yeah. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't hesitate, hesitate for one moment. And, and Isaac was a teenager at the time when uh, he was going to be sacrificed uh, uh, by uh, Abraham. And, and he went up there and Isaac asked a question. You know, because he knew that Abraham was going to sacrifice because normally they sacrificed animals, yeah, like sheep and goats and something like that. They didn't have a sheep or a goat. They didn't have, they didn't have anything to sacrifice. So Isaac said, well, where's the sacrifice? Yeah. And, and what did, what did, what did uh, Abraham say? God will provide. Yeah, God will provide. Now, at the time uh, when they got there, Abraham tied uh, uh, Isaac's hands behind his back, his feet, and he, and he put uh, and he, bi- he built a big uh, had this big uh, fire uh, uh, logs of fire uh, fire sit there ready for the sacrifice. Okay, and he placed Isaac on it. Well, I, I, I'm thinking, well, man, you know, Isaac has to be thinking, well, now, wait a minute. Now, you know, it, it can't be me. <laughs> yeah. You know, many times, uh, why me, if you will, that was going to be sacrificed. Okay. You know the story. Now, let me uh, go back to the book of Colossians because I've got, I've got plenty of time. Notice. The mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all, underline the word, all, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, do you want to be wise? Yeah. In the book of James, it says all you got to do is ask God. Ask. Yeah. And he'll give, you, he'll give you wisdom. God will give it to you. You know, many times we think we're wise. We think, well, I know, you know, I, I got promoted on my job. I, you know, I, I live in Beverly Hills, that is, yeah. Or I drive a, a Rolls Royce up and down the street. You know, I got money coming from every kind of direction. You know, people are throwing money at me and so forth like that, yeah. I'm not talking about me, but other people. And uh, uh, they say, okay, I've got wisdom. I've got knowledge. I, I, I've got it, yeah, in, in other words, yeah. Now, the Bible doesn't say that. Notice what it says. It says, the, the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden. Notice, you got to dig it out. If something is hidden, that doesn't mean it's easy to find, is it? It says hidden. Am I, am I miss, uh, uh, missing something here uh, in the Bible? Uh, yeah, you know, where the scripture says, study to show yourself uh, approved on the God, or uh, work when they need to not be ashamed. Rightly, am I rightly dividing the word of God? I'm just reading what it says. It says, in whom are hidden all the treasures. Now, not, not just one treasure, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Everything that you ever want to know, where can you get it from, right? You can get it from God. You can get it from, from Jesus. You can get it from Christ. It's hidden in them. So somebody asked me once, well, Dr. Ray, okay, if it's hidden in them, how can I get it out? You know, is this hide and go seek? Yeah. Uh, Well, in essence, it is. Because you have to get to know this God, yeah, that has all of these hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. 
Do you realize it's better to have wisdom and knowledge than to have all the money in the world? Yeah. I don't know who the richest man in the world is. Uh, I, I knew it for a moment there. It used to be Bill Gates, but uh, I'm not sure if he's still the richest man in the world. It seems like there's somebody else who's the richest man. In, it's not Donald Trump. I know that. Yeah. He's way down the ladder. But they're the richest man in the world. Yeah. Like he has $800 billion. You know, that's something, I, you can't, if you give me a pen and say, write down $800 billion, I probably couldn't do it, yeah, yeah, I, I probably would get lost, I, I, I'd get lost at uh, $1.3 billion, yeah, okay, the richest man in the world has over $800 billion, okay, guess what, we have something that is more valuable than $800 Billion dollars. I know people are winning the lottery around here. You know, they win three, four, five, eight, nine, ten million dollars or something. Like that. We're talking eight hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Okay. And we've got something as believers that is more valuable. Yeah. <clears throat> than eight hundred billion dollars. And you can get it now, right here, right now in this earth realm. Yeah. Right here, right now. You can have it now. My name is Dr. Ray. If you want to know how to get a hold of that, something that's more valuable than $800 billion, you can call me or you can email me, right? It's rwnst2 at aol.com. It's rwnst2 at aol.com. Dot com. Should I have to say that again? So I say, yeah, I got a good memory, Dr. Ray. I heard it the first time. Yeah. Okay. Then we also have a church. It's located at 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California. Guess what? We have a service there every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. until 1030 a.m. Now, whether you're a believer, a non-believer, an agnostic, uh, an atheist, whatever you are, you're welcome, yeah? You can come there and see what's going on. Somebody said, you want us to worship, and I don't believe in what I'm worshiping? <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody wants to worship something or somebody. That's what I noticed. I said something or somebody. Everybody wants to worship something, yeah? So, but they don't know what they worship. Yeah, remember when the Apostle Paul came to uh, Rome? Yeah, the, the Romans were worshiping all kinds of gods. Yeah, and the Apostle Paul I said, said to them, I see you're very spiritual. Yeah, you're, you're worshiping uh, many gods, but, you know, I have a God that is the God of gods, if you will. Yeah, he was ta he was talking to the Roman because they didn't know who to worship. Or the Greeks, they didn't know who to, who, to, who to, they worshipped everything. They were almost like the e the Egyptians, you know. The Egyptians worshipped whatever you can think of. They, were, they everybody had their own little god, if you will. Yeah, that they worshipped all the time. And the Apostle Paul, of course, was telling the Romans, "I have the true God. Yeah, the Almighty, the El Shaddai. Yeah, oh, oh, okay, uh, uh, that you can learn to worship." of God, yeah, that is capable of all things. Because, you know, when, when the uh, Egyptians, uh, the, the Romans said this, they had all these different gods, everybody had their own little god, you pray for your god for one thing, and somebody else pray for their god for one thing, if your prayers got conflict, then who's gonna, whose prayer is going to get answered, right? Which god is going to reveal? None of those gods ever revealed or did anything, yeah, but uh, the Apostle Paul, of course, of course, knew the real God, if you will, the real deal, if you want to put it that way, yeah, the Apostle Paul. And he was there rather than bringing, uh, uh, speaking against their God, he acknowledged that they had gods, yeah, and that they were all worshiping God. And they wanted somebody to worship somebody, but they didn't know who to worship, right? They didn't know the right God or the only God, as it were, to worship. They were just worshiping everything, you know. They said, you, know you got your God over here, I got my little God over here, and so forth like that. They were just worshiping, if you will. So they didn't know who to worship. But the Apostle Paul did, yeah. And he was telling them who it was, yeah, that has eight a billion dollars, if you will, more valuable than eight billion dollars, God has it. Yeah? And it's available to you. I'm out of time.
If this program has been a blessing to you and your family or has helped you in any way, please feel free to write to us and pray for us. Remember also, we need and appreciate your financial support. Please send your financial gifts and love offerings to Dr. Ray Winston at P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. That's Dr. Ray Winston, P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. You also may call Dr. Ray at area code 310-559-8320 or 800-747-8320. Remember also, God loves a cheerful giver.